Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, if you haven't already, go and grab a pen or pencil and some paper as today's session is a drawing session and we'd love you to uh, draw along with Andy today. Um, we're very lucky to have Andy here today. Andy has worked with all the major brands. He's worked with Marvel. Uh, he's worked with Assassin's Creed, the game, if you're into gaming. Um, he also, at the moment, produces commercials for Pokemon. Uh, which is amazing. Oh, and he's authored two kids' books, Space Kid Ilk and uh, Space Kid Ilk Part 2, which I believe will be out soon. Um, this is Space Kid Ilk here. Uh, these are all Andy's drawings I'm surrounded by. And um, today's session it, yeah, will be really interactive, so if you've got comments or questions, pop them in the YouTube chat. We really encourage that. I'm going to be looking out for them and passing them over to Andy. Um, Andy's also one of our visiting artists, so he goes around schools, um, teaching students what he does. So um, if this is your first time hearing about Artists in Residence and the work we do, um, just pop down to the description below uh, when the session's done uh, and you can learn a bit more about us. Uh, all our social medias are there too and all of Andy's. Um, okay, I believe that's everything before we get... Hello, Andy. Hello. Thanks for that, George. That's a great intro. Cool. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be running through some drawing stuff with you. I've got my tablet set up here and you're going to be checking on sort of any comments or whatever, and maybe popping up occasionally. Um, but hopefully everyone will be able to go and like get involved. Um, so now, yeah, as you say, go get pen and paper. I'm going to be talking a bit and doing a bit of drawing. So you've still got time, um, but it'll be good to get you drawing as well. So should I crack on? Yes. Do. Yeah. So this is me. I um, I work a lot in Photoshop, and a lot of my sort of drawings and designs are done in here. Um, and what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing very quick, simple characters. Uh, this is an example of how I draw myself as like a little signature um, when I'm about. I think that's it's an example of how you don't need to draw in too much detail. And uh, we're doing some very simple characters. Um, my background, is, as George has already said, I've done a lot of like storyboards and character design before. Uh, it's part of it's part of my work. It's part of my job to always be drawing. It helps me to kind of generate and think about ideas. Um, well, he also mentioned the the books. So I've got a graphic novel called um, Space Kid Ilk. Some of you might know him. This is Ilk. And that is a little comic graphic novel that you can you can sort of find um, you can find on Amazon and things. But that's an example of the kind of things that we're going to be doing today. Some very simple drawings and characters. So uh, for you, hopefully, what I want you to get out of this is to be able to find a character that you can draw and enjoy drawing. Because uh, you're going to have to draw it over and over again. With I'm thinking of this in terms of of a comic. Uh, how can you design a character that you can tell a story with? If you can find a way to tell your own story through a comic, it's a great way. And because comics as well, you don't need to draw too much, uh, and you don't need to write too much either. There's not a lot of words involved necessarily. And with just very simple um, visual, very simple drawings, and just a few words, you can tell a story. So I want you to be able to come up with a character that you enjoy drawing and you can draw again and again, and people enjoy seeing, and it's very expressive. So we're gonna look at a few simple principles and a few of the ideas and techniques that I use to create a character that has that, has that um, quality that, can be, that it can be drawn again, and it can be very expressive. So the first thing, and the thing to kind of, the main stress of all of this is that we're drawing a character, not, a person. It doesn't need to be a perfect representation of a person. I'll give you an example. So that, what's that? That's a, that's a face, isn't it? Uh, it's a face, it immediately communicates something, um, and it's very simple. Now it's not, it, it looks like a face, but it's actually two circles and a line. Really what this is, is a symbol. 
it's a representation of a face. And so this is when, when I'm talking about a character, this, these are the, this is the idea that I want you to kind of keep in mind that what we're creating is a symbol, uh, something to communicate something. When we're drawing, um, we, it's worth thinking about what's the purpose of the drawing. And when we're drawing for comics, the purpose is to tell a story. So all of the marks that you make on the page have a role to play in communication, in communicating what your story is, what the character is feeling, who the character is, and what emotions they're going through. Um, and so as part of that, as part of kind of that guide, that principle of kind of communication, if we were to, for instance, think about actually just drawing a face in a little bit more detail, let's make them a bit smiley, and we've got some eyes, and we make sure we get like the nostrils in there, and we put the eyebrows on there, and we get the eyelids in there, we put the eyelashes, and we've got some hair, and they've got an ear, and they've got a neck, and we've got a collar, and maybe they've got a little chin, got a little chin dimple, maybe a top lip. And you know, you've got all of these details on the face. Um, but really, what's that communicating? What are you telling with that? Is it much more effective to just do this? What communicates a, more, a stronger emotion? Really, what we're looking for in these is, is finding that simplicity, finding that simplicity to, that can help us communicate the emotion of the story. Um, and I think I'd argue that something on this, like, like these much simpler designs, are actually a lot more effective. And what's great about that is that you don't need to worry then about all of the little details. That you can tell a story even with, you can tell, you know, people worry about, oh, I can't draw well. It doesn't matter if you can't draw because actually everyone can draw a stick man. And a stick man can say so much. Uh, already that's enough to be able to tell a story. Now, I know we can feel a bit, you know, we can get a little bit more ambitious than stick men, um, but, if if you don't want to if you don't want to go more complex than that that's plenty um one of the other things that we're looking at in terms of the simplicity let's think about for instance we're drawing a full body now what we see a lot of the time when we're thinking about a character is actually the silhouette of the character the silhouette is really important what i mean by that is this is an outline so this yeah, it's a pretty rubbish outline uh, of a person, um, but it's also pretty standard. It doesn't tell us much. Sure, okay, the proportions are a little bit more, okay, the head is about the right size to have some feet, but it doesn't tell us as much um, for the purposes of the story. If we start changing that silhouette, we can maybe start to tell a little bit more. We can start making start exaggerating certain elements and the character starts to become a little bit more expressive but what we're going to be thinking about is this is this silhouette and breaking things down into simple shapes so it doesn't need to look realistic it just needs to communicate something. Okay. Um, so there are some basic kind of starting uh, principles that, that we're gonna be bearing in mind as we go through. Now, here I'm gonna look at some of the tools, some of the other parts of some of the different elements that I think about when, when drawing. One of them is shapes. So. This is when, so I've been, I've been talking a lot. I've been drawing on my pad. Now is for you. Now is a good time for you to get pen to paper. Um, and what we're going to be doing, starting with just drawing some simple circles and then maybe vary the shapes of the circles a little bit on the page. And this is a fun game that I like to play. This helps to introduce the idea of just using simple shapes that we can uh, use as like a skeleton for our character design and it helps us to draw the character again and again. Um, the first thing to note here or to remember, 
at the beginning i drew that really simple smiley face right now this this smiley face is key we're going to be using this again and again those two dots in the line that communicate so much um and eyebrows i really like eyebrows um those are often very key to our character designs and so we're going to take your shapes that you've drawn on your page and start adding two dots and a line at different points in the circle and then you can start to vary the lines maybe it's got different eyebrows maybe the eyes are a little bit bigger give it a nose that could be that could be a nose and this can be that can be a mouth there so start drawing eyes and mouths very simply in different parts on the page and notice how you don't need a lot of information to and it starts to look like a character it starts to look like a person it starts to have a little bit of personality and these little details these very simple variations uh, are what give it that personality once you've done that with a few different circles let's add another circle to it at the bottom Not a lot of space there for that one. Let's get rid of this. So I'm going to add two. And so you start to see again through these simple shapes, these variations and these silhouettes that are a lot more distinctive than that first silhouette that we saw of the body, how the character changes and once we've got that, we start asking a few more questions. Now, at this point, I like to be a bit inspired by what's on the page, what I'm looking at. Um, and I start to think about, okay, who is this? So who is this first person? I, they're very happy. I feel like they're, I feel like they need headphones for some reason. They're listening to music. And maybe they've got, a little bit of hair there and the details that we add now to the character within that shape or just outside that shape are what tell us a little bit more about their personality and who they are let's say they're walking along and you see i'm doing very simple limbs as well just as kind of stick figures we can add maybe they're carrying a bag on their way to school but that is a is an example of a character line. Have a look at what else you can do to your other shapes on your page. So this one, who is it? I I don't. I'm getting carrot vibes from this. So let's put a little bit of like sort of carrot top on the top there. Um, but they've got a body, so we'll give them some legs as well, and maybe a tie. It's a carrot with a tie. We add some glasses and let's say they're holding a clipboard. So you see, I start thinking about who they are, who, what, whether, you know, that it's a carrot, sure, but it's also a businessman and they've got a clipboard and they're very important. Um, but also pretty happy. It sounds, looks like their day is going quite well. This one, is not having such a good day so we can think about what they're doing i'm gonna give and give them a little hat a baseball cap and a beard why are they unhappy so have a look at your drawings as well have a think about why they are the way they are. It's gonna have very high trousers. Maybe he's looking at his lawn and there is, someone's dug a hole in it. <laughs> um, 
so keep doing that i'm gonna i'm gonna sort of move on a little bit here but the the idea for that these simple shapes is that they are the basis and if you look at all characters even so i'll draw one that you might recognize now This is an example of a great character design. And they're just based, again, around two circles, lot, using lots of circles. So you probably recognize this, this guy. Um, And it's a formation for a lot of Pokemon is, is, is the basis of circles. So this is a very common thing, a common way to sort of start building up um, character designs. Now, when I'm drawing those circles, what I've been thinking of is, I've been thinking of them in, in 2D shapes, but actually, for instance, with Pikachu here, well, he's actually, I say circles, but he's actually built out of spheres, which is why I add these curvy lines to it. You'll see artists do that. And these curvy lines help give us an idea of the form. So if you can imagine this going around in the background, that going all the way around and all the way around here, it's actually a sphere. And those lines help us to understand the shape. Um, so rather than putting, if, they, if it was flat and you had flat lines like that, and I might put two eyes here and a line like that, what I actually do on a sphere is I put the eyes either side of that line and then I lay out the smile using those lines as a guide as well. So rather than doing it a straight line across, it's slightly curved following that curvy line there. And so that's that's how that, that um, principle of around simple shapes also evolves. If we start looking at squares, um, you may know this, but a very simple way to draw a 3D shape is just to draw it twice <laughs> and then link it up. Um, so then we've got a cube. Now we can translate this into a similar way of doing, um, of building characters around squares. So maybe put your, maybe put your circular designs to one side. We're going to try doing so designs with, with squares and with triangles. And maybe combining a little bit of both. I find squ squares are often really good for the, the body, for the structure, for the form of the, of the character. Um, I say squares, but I'm altering them a little bit. You know, sometimes they are more triangular. And I'll do another one down here. So we're altering the shape. So we can we can do a similar thing that we just did. We'll start putting. Let's switch to black. And start putting details over the top. Now um, imagine again those those lines. That help to give us help act as a bit of a guide. What can we add to this one? Add, add some of these. I clearly like drawing little aliens. And let's try putting the eyes in a different place on the square. So hopefully you've got some squares on your page. And you can start playing with where the face lands on your squares. We start adding some more details. I'm going to, it's going to be a scarf. Got a woolly hat. I 
So again, we're saying that we don't need to do too much information. So that's where the face is on this one. Maybe we use actually uh, for this, maybe that's not the face. What if we were to add a circle at the top here and we make this the body? Maybe this is like a robot. It's a door in its center. And finally, let's do something with this one. Hopefully you've got some cool characters going on in yours as well. This one is gonna have a massive head. You we see, you see their brain. That's what brain looks like, right? Uh, this isn't a biology lesson. There we go. Okay, so that's some principles about how we do uh, build our characters around very simple shapes. Another thing that you'll notice is when I'm drawing these shapes, I'm I'm not. Um, let me turn the opacity up on that. I'm not doing very careful lines like this that go very slowly. What I'm trying to do is make these lines expressive. I'm trying to get them down in one gesture. And this is how we get a lot of emotion into our character. So we start thinking about how the lines, how we can draw in one gesture to express the emotion of this character on our page. So here's a new experiment for you. Start with a line, have a line that goes maybe something like that, uh, and then add A couple of circles below it so they look quite mean and maybe you've got another line at the bottom there but you see how these it's that gesture that one movement um, can help to express so much of the emotion so now maybe let's try building a character around this we've just been talking about simple shapes what if we turn this into into um, a sort of a triangle shape. You know what, this is starting to look a little bit like a fish, so I'm gonna go with it. It's an angry fish. We've got, uh, it's an angry fish with big eyebrows. Or maybe they're just, maybe they're not angry, they're just disappointed. Uh, no, looking a little bit stern. We can add some details like the scales on the fish's body. And, and you see how that silhouette, that external shape is a little bit more distinctive, how this line sort of helps us to tell the story. Um, so try that again and we'll try Let's see, let's see how we do with maybe that. Let's do another line there. So what we're gonna do here is translate this into not just the face, but also the body. So you see how the expressive lines help to make this, this character look like they're ready for a hug. And that sort of tells that story. You do big things there. So you, again, it's, it it just looks looks simple. It's simple and expressive. It's the idea. Um, now the trick is for us is to combine these two concepts and find a balance. We want those expressive lines that we can draw in one movement, and we also want a shape, a form that we can build our character around and draw again and again. Um, so obviously the lines are gonna change because the emotion is gonna change from moment to moment, from scene to scene. Uh, it depends what we wanna communicate. But the form needs to stay relatively 
you know, relatively the same. It needs to be recognizable in each panel. So how do we, how do we go from, let's, let's start, let's go from, let's have a look at our, our fish person here. Um, we've already started to establish a simple shape, which looks like a little bit of a diamond. And this is where I find drawing a character again and then drawing them again and again really helps because we start to find out what characteristics characteristics about the character we like. You change one thing and they, the personality looks a little bit different. Um, so have a look at one of your characters that you've drawn already. Let's try drawing it again. And let's focus on one part of it that you particularly like. So what I liked about this is actually the big, that we have the head at the top here, maybe. Uh, I'll put a mouth there. Now they're still looking a little bit sad. And they've got eyebrows. I'm not going to link them up this time. I'm going to have them sort of sticking off like that. Maybe they're, you know, fish have these sort of like things sticking out of their head sometimes. Um, and they look quite, they actually look quite powerful. As fish goes, it looks quite powerful. What else can we add? What other features? Let's, so let's say, for instance, you decide to add a beard to the character. So we've built that simple shape. We've drawn the character again. You see, I'm using that, that, it's actually this the, the formation of this is built again around those expressive lines sort of that one that cross section here that helps us to show a certain kind of stance in the character um, let's have a look back at some of our other designs i'm going to go back to the carrot and let's see if we can what we can do to make them a little bit more, what other elements and areas of them can we focus on? So I was talking about drawing the character again and again. So have a look at one of your characters and let's start drawing them in different ways. So I really like their glasses. So I might focus on the glasses for this one. I'm gonna switch back to the black. And I'm gonna start with the glasses and the eyes there and I'm not going to I'm not going to do the body in the same way I'm just going to give it some little legs like that you see actually by removing that shape that the the body shape here um, I think that's already an improvement we focused on a couple of details and you can give the tie just using that simple, simple shape. These are these are the lines of the carrot. This is its smile, and we we want you know we want these this one for this design. We are focusing on the glasses, so we're going to focus. We we'll have the glasses dominate. We won't make the hair a bit too big. Um, and you see, they look they look very they look very nice. They look very efficient is how I'd describe this carrot office person. But what would happen if we focused on a different area? Let's say this time we focus on the hair, on the, um, I'll say hair, the leaves that come out of its head. Let's make that a little bit bigger. So we'll start with that this time. And we'll make it quite broad. We won't make them as tall. Now I'm already starting to get a bit of an impression about this, about this character. You'll see here now I'm gonna do some more structural lines that will help me place the eyes. So what's good, I mean, I don't know if some, some of you might be drawing on iPads or you might have Photoshop, but really all you need to do is maybe think about start drawing with a pencil and, and then we can go, you can go over the top of it in ink later. 
Um, but feel free to just sort of make mistakes and draw it again and again. And that's, again, the, the best part of not drawing a, a character with too many details that, we, that, that you don't mind going, okay, next, just let's move on. Um, so this one, they're going to have glasses, but I think they're going to have square glasses. It's a slightly different personality. And actually, that line across there looks like a sort of a wide mouth, so I'm going to use that. And this time, they're looking a little bit, they're still going to have a tie. Do you see how this time they've got a little bit a slight, a, a, it's a different personality. How am I going to do their legs? Might also still do their legs as just very thin, uh, thin legs there. Um, but you see how these are from the same principle, from the same uh, starting base, exaggerating different areas. We've got um, we've got two very different characters. So what we're going to try now is. Because let's say for your story, you already know, you already know you want to draw a unicorn or, or uh, you want to draw, there are details about the character that you know that you need to include. Um, it's not as simple as just drawing a shape. Um, there are There is a certain personality. You've already got something in mind that you want to show rather than just starting with the line or starting with the shape. Um, and now where I like, I'm just drawing a unicorn now. <laughs> um, but where I like to start is, is thinking about what the character might say. And that always helps me, helps to sort of motivate the design of the character and the feeling of the character. So I've got some quotes here. Um, dot, 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 it makes no difference to me. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do before we go into this. I'll check in with George. Are there any notes or questions or has anything come up yet that people might want to, um, it would be a good thing for me to comment on? Hi, Andy. No specific questions yet, I don't think, but I would like to just comment on the carrot and how great I think he is. I think there's a real <laughs> opportunity for a new TV show there. Maybe, but, but yeah, that might be the next the or yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've, had a, we've had a few comments. People are following along. A lot of people are excited about seeing Pikachu. But yeah, if you do have any suggestions for Andy, do pop them in the, pop them in the chat as we go. Yeah, and um, maybe if you have time at the end, I'll, I'll draw, I can draw another Pokemon for you. Um, <laughs> So what we're having a look at now is how to start a character design based off a line, based off a quote. Um, and maybe a better one to start with is this one. You will never defeat me, dot, 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 something. Um, can we finish that line? Is anyone there would they, is, is anyone there that would be able to comment or offer suggestions for how this line might end? You will never defeat me, carrot man, or you will never defeat me, uh, dragon or you will never defeat me giant pizza um, and it will this will help us to think about who that person needs to be um, do you have any do you have any suggestions George yeah I'll jump in unless anyone else I can see a few people coming in, but no one's come up with one yet um, yeah I'll say you'll never defeat me uh, queen of the universe okay Okay, great. That's a great starting point. So from there, we're going to start building out a story. Um, who? Oh, queens of the universe. Let's make it just queen. They're not. They're not too daunt over, overwhelmed yet by queens. Um, you'll never defeat me, queen of the universe. Who would be up against the queen of the universe? Maybe the princess of the universe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you have any thoughts, George? uh it could be anyone couldn't it um perhaps the king of the universe literally we have the, the king and the queen <laughs> of the universe against each other um there's only one universe it's pretty huge you'd think they could share um but no and if we're doing that let's go we've got you'll never defeat me queen of the universe yeah or i've had annabelle here but say um i'm the boss I'm the boss. Yeah. Okay, I tell you what, let's do that. Let's have... 
Oh, you will never defeat me. Dot. I'm the boss. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I think we're going to end up doing two characters. We're going to have a queen and a king. Okay. Uh, one of them is saying, you will never defeat me, queen of the universe. The other one is saying, you will never defeat me. I'm the boss. Oh, we've had one more. I've got to say, it is a good one. They've, they've said fluffy bunny. <laughs> you will never defeat me, fluffy bunny. <laughs> uh okay oh, i, I want to get these all in here okay well we can it turns out the king and queen of the universe the queen of the universe is a fluffy bunny um and the queen of the universe is saying you will never defeat me i'm the boss and then the king of the universe over here is just saying you will never defeat me queen of the universe. okay so let's think about the bunny now a bunny is a great place a great place to start for us here because um, there's a lot of really distinctive shapes in the bunny. Um, we could think about, we could think about how the ears affect it. Um, I've got big teeth or we could do big cheeks. Right, with some ears. Or we can focus on, I mean, that almost looks more like a, like a squirrel. Uh, or we can think about when thinking about a bunny, what else? Oh, we've got Matt, we've got some booty big feet sometimes, don't you? So you see how I'm sort of focusing on different areas. <laughs> what I quite like about this is the, that look, that shape is quite powerful. Um, so maybe let's go, let's go with that. Because this is where we're thinking, okay, we need to do a bunny, but the bunny needs to reflect a certain personality, a particular design. And the bunny is the, is the queen of the universe. So I think this shape is a good example. That it feels powerful. So I'm gonna start building our bunny around that shape. I'm gonna make the head quite, um, quite simple at the top here as we said talked about before just one circle and actually we're going to add a couple of circles to and we've got some teeth <laughs> bring out massive feet you will never defeat me i'm the boss so as you say it, you make the expression even with your face. Now, I can see my face here now, but it's, it's, good. It's, it's quite good also to have a mirror with you to see what expressions that you make. Think of the character you want to design, say the line, it's look at your face. Uh, you will never defeat me, I'm the boss. So actually the lines are quite, you know, it's, it's, the eyebrows are quite straight across, looks quite cross. Um, I recommend growing a beard if you can, because it helps to exaggerate the mouth expressions. Something like that. So you will never defeat me, I'm the boss. I, I have actually drawn a beard on the bunny. We don't want the bunny to have a beard, because they're the queen. Um, other deep, this is where we start adding details to, to the character. Look, queen, we've got a little crown, but doesn't need to be too detailed just needs to be enough to communicate who this person is. And we're gonna give, they're gonna cross their arms. Maybe, should we give the queen a big, big sort of dress? So, so what I'd recommend is maybe starting in pencil. What I've done is I've done that on one layer and then over the top, we can add a little bit more. We can sort of go over it again. Okay, so I like these cheeks. It's a good tip generally for your drawings as well. Uh, it's quite good to have the outline a little bit thicker. Uh, something that I do in my drawings, um, if I'm drawing ilk, for instance, I make the 
the, a few marks a little bit thicker than the other marks. So the eyes are important. I want them to look at the eyes, so I make them a little bit darker. Uh, I do some light lines there. But then I also do sort of thick eyebrows because they are very expressive. I have these lines a little bit thicker because they are very, they, those are what help us to recognize the character. Um, whereas other lines are not as thick. Um, so here for our, for our bunny, put the nose in, put that cheek. Maybe they've got a little chin. Maybe they've got different eyelashes. So you can see how that's all just based around a circle. We have the have one of these ears sort of flopping over. We'll have both of the ears sort of flopping over. I don't know about you, but I stick my tongue out when I'm drawing, whenever I'm thinking, uh, <laughs> having to concentrate. Um, so I'm to just think my tongue out. Just, just can't help it. So then we have bunny, and we, we give it the toes here. Maybe we, off to the side, maybe we see a tail or something. Well, we wouldn't see it from this angle, but you can imagine a tail sticking out the back of the dress. So this is the queen of the universe, Bunny. And over here, well, I mean, <laughs> this feels like an opportunity for us to, to use our carrot, because who is more likely to feel threatened by a bunny than a carrot man. Um, let's put our carrot man here. And so we've got the Queen of the Universe there. The carrot man is pretty small. Now I know that might seem like cheating, but this is going to give us a little bit more time at the end. Um, in fact, maybe there's, there's some little patterns on the dress. This is where we can sort of add some details to you know, what's on the clothes or whatever. It's nice to add some patterns on the clothes sometimes, just as a little bit of texture. It doesn't need to take too much attention. Um, it's just there. You can see how these lines are thicker than the internal lines. Um, so they draw more attention. And what we focus on a lot more is, is the silhouette. Okay. Um, I think that's our little scene. <laughs> um, are there any are there any other um, questions or notes that have come up, George? Maybe a request for a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could check. a lot of love for Captain Carrot. I'm seeing, which is fair enough. He's great. So that's, good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Okay, cool. Um, well, that's been great. I hope everyone sort of enjoyed this. There's a lot. There's a lot to sort of digest there. So I won't. I won't ramble on uh for any more um i um but yeah you can get in contact with me i've got got instagram and you've got space kadilk is available um so you can go check that out comic book there's images throughout um with a lot of all my sort of character designs and stuff um is there anything else george uh yeah just a quick, can we leave a quick question um i just for all the students that are watching uh, that might feel inspired to uh to get into animation and, and, and drawing, um, what would you suggest for them? You've worked with all the big brands like Marvel and uh, and Pokemon, and how could they how could they do that? I think um, you know the best the best thing is just to keep drawing, is just to keep on working and follow what you enjoy. Um, as you see with this, we don't you don't need to get bogged down in too many details. If there's something that I'm focusing on that you don't find as interesting or as fun, go towards the bit that you do find fun. And 
when we're doing the things that we enjoy, it gives us more energy. So we're more likely to work harder at it. And when we work harder, then we become more successful when we do more work and we and we find ourselves in places. And so that's sort of something that I've always um, followed in terms of trying to find the things that I enjoy and just do more of it and um, using that as, as a constant motivator. So just if you like drawing, keep drawing and show people. That's the other thing. That's difficult sometimes. It's, it is scary to show people your work, but show people. People will like it. And if they don't, they will tell you why. And then you'll learn something from it. Okay. All right, Andy, that's been brilliant. And thank you so much for, for joining us today. Um, if you did enjoy today's session, all Andy's links are below. Um, and do go check out his book. It, your second book comes out when, Andy? Second so book's video. out in September. Okay, so yeah, video part two out in September. Okay, thank you. Brilliant. Well, thank you. And uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I hope it's been useful.